that makes sense on so many levels. And when I say I do not consent, it's less about me, Danny, as more so like, this is all of our earthship and this needs to be a collective conversation. And until we have a collective conversation, this needs to stop. I have the same perspective about CERN. And I agree because I also can see validity or sometimes resonate with the idea that this whole um, like enslavement construct is AI and has been for, you know, hundreds of thousands of millennia or whatever. But I also, you know, my worldview is as above, so below. It's all multidimensional. So I prefer to engage on the dimension of nature and humanity and organic. And I don't consent to being pulled into some other one. But again, it's just like, where is the collective conversation and this just like, it's never a challenge. Like, well, this is where we're going. And it's like, no, just because we can go there, just because like the capital M masculine has achieved these feats of like technological advancement doesn't mean that they're in our best interest to implement and given the repercussions that needs to be a collective conversation. Jeff Goldblum had it right. Just because they can doesn't mean it's <laughs> good, right? Does and, and that's kind of what I always refer to it as boys with toys. And that's kind of what it's like. It's like when a boy gets a new toy, one of the first things he does is he's like, "Can I take this apart? Can I light it on fire? <laughs> can I blow it up? What happens if I throw it at somebody? Like, how heavy is this? Is this a weapon, right?" And that's like kind of the process. That don't don't forget, can I stick it in my nose? Because that's always yeah. one. To Right. Yeah. What does it taste like? <laughs> what does it taste like? Yeah. Um, what happens if I stick it up Billy's nose? <laughs> you know, is also probably in there. But uh, yeah, you know, all of those things is exactly what they do when they discover something new. And and this whole like we don't get to consent to any of it as a collective ever. Right. It's like it's way after the fact, even with the joy. I mean, the fact that it's commonly ex accepted that that was manufactured, right? And then the solution to it being a different kind of manufacture that actually subverts nature and was never explained that way, right? And heavily lied about, but like, this is just now. This has always been this way, like radio waves. Did anyone really know what was happening? No, we were just all looking at the benefit, right? And that's the way that this has all worked. And it's, you know, now they're openly saying it, but I, I wrote it into the blog that their attitude to it is they make you want it. And then once you want it, they give it to you and they don't explain to you that, oh, it comes at a price, by the way, right? Like you can't get something for nothing. So this is what's going to happen as a result of us giving you what you wanted. Sorry, <laughs> right? It's like after the fact, you find out that's the the fine print right mm -hmm. yeah the, the uh radio waves thing you said was just was interesting i'm um about to go into like a jazz riff style series with uh, our friends from the melt which i think shane you've been on and danny you're about to be to be on uh an interesting sort of dip into something something not brand new but something that deserves many second looks and um, one of the things that will be part of that topic is the conversation of radio waves and electricity and what exactly that brought in other than the obvious, like powered use of things and communication, like what else was using those lines to travel? What else did that open up? Like, you know, that whole sort of conversation for sure. And how it was all used, right? Like everyone's talking now about AI and it's, it's power to like ha hack the mind and and various things to that and how people are going to be possessed by it that's not new right like they've been openly playing with that i mean militaries have been playing with radio frequencies and and like deliberately trying to aggravate certain little villages you know what i mean like using it uh like affecting us at a radio frequency level now they just have a very a much bigger toy Right. And I, it was funny when you brought up CERN earlier, because that's something that like I use on people who don't I, I don't know on this on this level all the time in public actually is like, well, if you consider what they said, they think it can do. Are you OK with them doing that? Because what they openly said was that they think it, they can open a black hole with it. 
you're okay with them opening a black hole with it? Like, <laughs> right? Why did nobody step in at that, that point <laughs> and go, wait, you think it can do what? And you want us to let you build a what? No, we're not going to let you build a thing that can do that, right? But, oh, here's this thing that can do this thing. We're going to use it <laughs> is kind of their MO, right? Do the people that you ask ever see like how it's totally ridiculous that they're doing this? No, never. never no, because ah. everyone just it's that deferring everything to experts thing that everyone does, right? And even even within the experts field, they do that amongst themselves, <laughs> right? It's like I, um, you know, I'm a doctor of this thing. I don't know anything about that, but I have a friend who does, and I talk to them, and so <laughs> they're my authority. Well, that's what I think, isn't that the underlying idea behind Consilience Project, Annie, is that people who are the quote unquote experts in all of their subjective fields will just refer to one another as evidence of the part of their field that they're less sure about, that like, that's right, because so-and-so is more of an expert in like that particular pile of bullshit than I am. Hey, superstars, thank you so much for sharing your sacred attention with me. If you are receiving any value whatsoever from my videos, I am encouraging you to give back, to pay it forward by supporting me on my Patreon community, on my locals community, on both. Your support allows me to keep on keeping on and to keep making content like this. It used to be much easier back in the days of a free press, but now given all of the censorship and the shadow banning, it really is challenging for content creators to continue to put out so much work. I'll just speak for myself. It's been, I'm excited for it to be easier for me to continue to put out more content and the primary way that it can be easier is by you supporting me financially by way of my Patreon and or my locals, where for as little as $5 a month, you get to be my hero and receive oodles of bonus content, and we both get to win. Okay, thank you so much for your support, for your attention, and for being Omniscopic Amazingness. I am, and so it's like a theory of everything amongst a group of like, aging middle aging middle aged but aging white men that is just like a circle jerk of self-contained flatulence as to like oh my god this person knows so much more than me except for when i know so much more than them and then i tell them what to do it, it's 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 like the funniest game of hot potato ever yeah it's kind of ridiculous but it seems to be working on the public that's super frustrating but yeah these ex self-proclaimed experts telling us how to think it's been that they call it sense making it's been that way for so long and before we ever had the internet, right? So people just don't know better. Now that the internet's available, you can see that that's not true. But before we had the internet, like you didn't know what was going on in the next city, let alone the rest of the other side of the world or what had gone on with the history of your school or any of that nonsense that we now have available to us today to figure this stuff out. And so now it's just like, it seems like it should be so obvious to people like us, but you know, it's just now that people even have that information available to them. And the unfortunate part is that Morpheus was right. And they're so helplessly dependent on this system now that they refuse to see what is right in front of their face. And that's that's kind of where we're at now. Well, it's so fascinating how the thing that we now like what we're talking about as far as experts and how it looks right now in this particular version of the Internet age, like back in the day, it was like the the expert was the professor who was sleeping with his student, right, kind of thing. And and, the, and that student was like head of the popular group of things. And that was like how he develops his little cult of people that like deferred to him. And there was a professor in each department that was like expert on their topic that had the same scam going. And it was doing the same thing that like chat groups and, you know, what it, like Discord servers or whatever are doing in, in the internet. And what's funny though, is even those of us who, who like, no, we're compartmentalized in the internet in ways that like certain things that should have been plainly obvious to us, like just didn't even occur to me. Right. So I just had Hunter from the melt on my show the other day. It's not out yet, but she was part of the whole Carlos Castaneda cult. Right. And for some reason, that's a sect sector of the project that 
we don't look, we don't talk about as much. Like we're very focused on the specifics that resonate for whatever our own personal experience was or the ones that we've been directed to. But very similar thing was obviously going on there. And the crazy part was when I looked at <clears throat> the history of Carlos Castaneda, like it sounds almost exactly the same as my dad. Right. Like he went to UCLA at about the same time, wrote almost the same kind of thesis about the same kind of topic, like templated in the same way. And like the same bullshit story about his that he was able to get a Ph.D. in anthropology without any field notes. Like my dad asked my dad about his and he's like, yeah, I didn't have to turn in my notes. I mean, I had them if they wanted them, but no one asked for them. Right. Kind of thing. And, and it was like, wow, OK, like and my dad, of course, was like I asked him, I was like, Do you know who Carlos Castaneda is? He's like. The name sounds familiar, but I'm not really sure, right? So, yeah. I'm uh, thinking the same thing when it came to, like, people now figuring out how fucked up universities actually are, right? And I'm like, they've been like that since the beginning, or but that's why they were created, right? Is to, to do the job that exactly you guys are finally figuring out. But that's where all of our experts also come from right and and you know and that goes into the maybe the more esoteric parts of thing of the fact that these guys are also parts of different types of fraternities like skull and bones and you know um obviously freemasonry things like that that we know of but you know that's why they would do that and it's like it's the same thing as like uh you know you're you're a doctor of one thing your buddy's a doctor of other things you want to be able to go on like mutual yacht trips together so of course you want your buddy to have as much money as you do so if you have a pro a, you know of someone to refer to you're going to refer to that buddy so that he will come along to it like just in a very human simple way but if you then put that into like all the cults that were involved and everything else that was going on yeah that's the way this has been happening forever right 